Hi, and welcome to part 5 in the Point Sense for Revit tutorial series. In this video, we're going to look at creating a topographic surface using points selected in Revit and VirtuServe, creating a topographic surface using results exported from a surface analysis, deforming a model element using points selected in Revit, deforming a model element using results exported from a surface analysis, and finally clearing the point sense data from the model. So if we open up Revit now, the tools we're going to be looking at today are the topo surface and the form shape command. So the problem that we have with Revit out of the box in terms of topographic surfaces is that if we go to the mass and site tab and topo surface, and we just quickly go to the site level just to drop in this topo surface, it will ask us to input a Z value or an elevation for every single point. So obviously from the point cloud this isn't snapping to the point cloud. So what we end up with if we go back to the point sense tab in the 3D view and hide off the point cloud we end up with a flat surface if we haven't manually inputted the Z value. So what we can do using point sense is we can select points on an area um, in Virtual Servo Revit and we can create a topographic surface that has um, Z values. So if we just go to VirtuServe and external scan it, you can see we're in a, an area here with a path and a small bank at the rear of the building. If we just load in the Revit toolbar and start to create some construction points and send them through to Revit, up, up this bank and then we'll just close it off along the bottom here. Just add a few more intermediate points in. All of these points, as you can see, are getting sent straight through into Revit. The reason this is flashing between the two programs is that I'm running this on a single screen and the macro is running. So let's just go into Revit now and have a look. Just navigate around slightly here. We'll hide off the point cloud. You can see all of those construction points have been created now in Revit based on the point cloud selections in VirtuServe. But what we can also do is if we wanted to do this inside Revit, we can also add some construction points in here. So I'm just going to go there and drop a few more points in this path. There we are. And just hide off the point cloud to show you those. There we are, so we've got a few extra points in. So all we're going to do now is going to go to the topographic surface command and we are going to highlight these points and then we're going to click finish. There you are, so as you can see there we've got a topographic surface and it, because of the Z value of all of those points we've got contours on there showing the um, difference in, that, in the elevation. If we want to go to the Mass and Site tab and just tweak those contours we can. Um, let's say for example we'll change the increment down to 500 millimeters. Apply that, you can see that updates there. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just delete off this floor we used to create the model lines. And as you can see there's quite a bit of noise in the model lines that was created by some of the noise in the point cloud. So let's just have a look at how this would work first. We're just going to click top of surface and highlight all of the model lines and click finish. And this is the result we get with the noise. So you can see we've got some spikes in the data which probably we really need to get rid of or aren't acceptable. The best way to deal with this would be to clean the point cloud first before bringing it into Revit. However, we're not able to do that. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to go in. And I've just speeded the video up a little bit here where I've just gone and I'm just going to delete out all of these points or all of these lines that we don't want to include in the topo surface so that we can get a nice smooth surface that's reflect a reflection of how the actual surface is in real life. So once we once we're happy with the selection that we've got if I go back into the topo surface now and just highlight those points again or those lines again and just click finish there you can see we've now got a nice smooth surface which reflects very accurately the uh, lie of the land at the rear of the building. 
Okay, so let's just try this similar process down here with the um, road. First of all, again, I'm just going to go in and delete this road off. Or sorry, delete this floor off. And we're going to navigate to the top view. Again, I'm just going to go to top or surface, and highlight all of these construction points, and then I'm going to click finish. If we just zoom in there now, you can see that's created a nice top or surface for us with the incline of the road and a slight gradient. Um, and if we want to just go and check that, we can go and change the contour slightly and we could tweak these maybe. Um, or we could just change the base level to zero and apply that and then we're just going to change the increment to something more suitable such as 100 for this ch smaller change in the Z value. You can see that there. So let's take a look now at how we could deform this shape using some selected points on the point cloud. So I'm just going to orientate this 3D view to a first floor. And I'm just going to crop this view down, this box section down, so that we can um, then turn on the point cloud and have a look at a limited area. So let's just navigate around that and then I'll just go to the point sense tab and hide, unhide the point cloud. So as you can see, there's some areas where the point cloud is below the surface and somewhere is it above. But I'll just show the process now. So I'm just going to get an XYZ construction point and just drop some random points on the ground here. So these are all snap into the point cloud. And similar to the top of the surface, these all have Z values. So there we are. A few points dropped in there. So we could do that in virtual serve as well if we wanted to. So let's just hide off the point cloud to see what we've created. So we've got about seven points there. So I'll just click on deform shape. First thing I do is select the floor itself. And then I'm just going to go around and select these seven points. There we are. And then I'm just going to go and click finish. That's going to give me an error saying it's going to kill the surface analysis results. That's fine. And we're just going to orient it around that to see you can see it's changed the profile of the actual floor itself based on those points or the Z value of those points. Okay so we're just gonna have a look now at what we can do with the deform shape tool using some of the results we exported from the surface analysis tool. So the best thing to do now will probably be to bring that surface analysis back in so we can have a look at what we were dealing with or what we're trying to achieve with the deformation. So just tra press transfer and finish and bring that back in. If we just navigate around. We can see some of the areas where we have sag into the floor and some of the areas which seem to have a bit of a bulge or a, a raised area. So we could use all of these two, all of these model lines now. Um, to deform the shape or we could just use some. So in the first instance then let's just select all of these model lines um, and we're just going to click finish and we're going to deform the shape based on those those lines. Obviously there's a large number of intersections there so we're going to end up with a lot about 756 specific coordinates that are going to be used to deform this. So. Let's have a look at this result now. So that's killed off the surface analysis result, that's fine. So let's navigate around. Obviously that is a large number of points to use to deform something like a floor. Um, however, we can see it has actually obviously changed the geometry of the floor itself. So probably best would be to export less model lines, probably larger centers, or to focus on specific areas where we know we have um, issues. So what I'm going to do in this instance now, I'm just going to go and hide off the uh, floor itself just for a minute. And then I'm going to just delete some of these model lines so we can just use just use a few different points or a few different lines to work with, with our forever deformation tool. So I'm just deleting some of these areas now. So we can use these uh, five lines. I'm just going to bring that floor back in because I'm going to need it to um, using the deformation tool so we'll unhide that and now if we just navigate around slightly 
and go to the deform shape tool select that floor and then I'm just going to pick these five model lines I'm going to click finish now you can see we've got a slightly more manageable result so we still have individual points around through those model lines um, that are being used to deform the shape but it's a little bit more of a um, manageable result so if we were going to hand this model over to a client now we'd probably need to clean it up a little bit so if we select one of these construction points you can see they're pinned elements so to delete one we do need to unpin it and press the delete key and these protocol points are similar we need to unpin them before we can delete them what we can do is we can take out protocol points on mass using the cleanup tool but first what we we'll probably need to do is just select all instances of the construction points themselves and what we're going to do is we're going to convert those just to protocol points so we're just dealing with protocol points we'll do the same now with the scan positions just convert them all to just select everything in the project and convert them to protocol points this is going to mean that when we run our cleanup tool which is in the top right hand corner of the screen we have a lot, lot of options here but specifically we're dealing with protocol points so we need to make sure remove all protocol points is selected and we're going to click OK this is going to give us some information about how we could get this information back if we wanted to and then we've also got a list of items that will be removed so we've got 1073 protocol points that have now been removed so now if we zoom in we can see we've got a much tidier model and all of the information we've created in terms of topo surface and deformed shapes and things is still intact.